I can't wait to see what illusion you've come up with for us. One of those romantic boy meets girl, boy loses girl stories. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the video. New low weigh in this morning, 91.8 kilos. Here is a full day of eating. These are the foods that I've been eating to get shredded. This is the diet that I have eaten to get shredded. I'm gonna talk you through what I've been doing over the last 12 weeks. I'm gonna talk you about how things have been manipulated over the last few weeks to encourage myself to continually lose weight and get shredded. And I'm gonna show you how you guys can do it as well. But first things first, I've got 45 minutes of cardio before I even eat, so let's do it. Coffee, okay, your himbine, okay, cool, let's go. So meal one, my first meal of the day, what I break my fast with, is about 11 o'clock now. I've done my cardio, um, I've primed myself for food, doesn't make a difference, I'm always primed when I'm this deficit. The first meal is going to be 40 grams of protein, it's going to be 40 grams of carbs, and it's going to be 10 grams of fat um, in the form of an essential fatty acid, which is going to be almond butter. There's a lot of good fats in, in almond butter. Um, egg whites being a highly bioavailable protein with a full amino acid complex, trying to get at least two to three grams of leucine in there, which is why we've gone for 40 grams. Uh, that's why we've gone for 300 grams of egg whites because it gives me 30 grams of protein, which is two or three grams of leucine, which is key for muscle protein synthesis. Veggies, I have the same veggies in every single meal or the same amount of veggies in every single meal. I pick like three or four veggies from a pool of about 20, which I rotate in and out. Um, and then I have a bagel thin with 10 gram, with 15 grams of jam on it. Why bagel thins? Because I just like them. There's no real problem. I could do oats. Yes, you could be healthy if you had oats. I like bagel thins. Meal one going down. The only time that I've not made a perfect omelette is the day that I'm filming it. I normally make perfect omelettes. Didn't today. Oh well. On to the next meal. Hello, lovely people. You might be thinking, Josh, but this diet that you're eating is not what got you shredded because you're eating that now, but you weren't eating that a few weeks ago. Yes, well done, you're very attentive, I enjoy that. Now, the diet has been progressive, okay? So I started this diet about 12 weeks ago, 13 weeks ago. I started about 4,000 calories, um, prioritizing carbohydrates on training days, a little bit more fats on non-training days. I have since then brought these calories down periodically through the weeks while adding in cardio to assess my my calorie deficit. Um, now, one thing we need to know about calorie deficit is that metabolism is a huge driver of where your deficit is going to be. Well, guess what? Metabolism is adaptive. Metabolism will change as you go through. There's a reason why when you get to 4,000 calories in an off season and you can't gain any more weight, there's a reason why you need to go up because your metabolism has adapted. Likewise, in a deficit, as you come down, you do more cardio and you're not moving any weight and you wonder why, it's because your metabolism has adapted. You have adapted to the stimuluses, you have uh, learned what's happening and now you need to increase that. That's where you would increase cardio, increase your deficit, you know, focus on training a little bit more. Um, so that's a little bit how you progress that through um, a dieting phase. Um, I'm now hitting 2,250 calories on a training day and 1,700 calories on a non-training day. So it's fairly low. I'm 92 kilos. Like my metabolism has clearly like come down over time as I got leaner and leaner and leaner, but that's what you need to do in order to get leaner and that is part of it. So yeah, I, I think that's what I wanted to say about where this diet has gone because it didn't start where it is right now and it's just progressively come down. I'm gonna see you at the next meal and I'm gonna give you the next tip about basically benefiting yourself the most you can in terms of eating little amounts of food and little tricks and tips that can help you move forward. So in for meal two, and this is my pre-workout meal, which is gonna be 70 grams of rice, which is 50 carb, 170 grams of low fat beef, which is gonna be my uh, essential fatty acid source, and also my protein source, because it is an animal protein, so complete protein, some mixed veggies again. Um, one thing that I want you guys to know about my regular protein feeding is, is I'm, I'm trying to go to spike muscle protein synthesis every four hours. Now, the reason why it's four hours, not every two hours, 
is generally because we want the full meal to digest and pass through the entirety of the digestive system. My, my, my digestion is probably going to be pretty good just considering um, I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm in a starving state so my body's going to assimilate things pretty quickly um, but, but generally speaking people would fully digest a meal between three and five hours. Obviously if you're in off season it's probably going to be more towards five hours because there's more to digest. Um, so you really want the full meal to digest first before eating end of the protein based meal um, to spike muscle protein synthesis throughout the day. That is going to be my tip. It's going to be regular servings of protein throughout the day. It's a real thing. There's some good research out there. Um, so try it. All right. So while I'm briefly, I'm just waiting for my training partner to turn up. I wanted to briefly go over um, intra workouts now. There's a lot of hustle and bustle about EAAs and branched chain amino acids and do they really work? And blah, 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 blah. Well, here's the thing the research, which I'm going to be tagging it in the, one of the top comments, I'll pin it, um, shows that intra workouts are a combination of essential amino acids, which contain leucine, a key amino acid, which I talked about a little bit earlier, combined with the carb powder actually helps mitigate protein breakdown. Now, we know that we're constantly in this battle of muscle protein synthesis to muscle protein breakdown, muscle protein synthesis gaining muscle, muscle protein breakdown, losing muscle. We know we're on that constant balance the whole time and actually uh, muscle protein breakdown is needed as a part of just, just a general part of, of, of how we function as, as people. Um, so the balance just needs to be like this. So things that we can we can do to tip the balance in that favor, intra workout seems to be one of them, it helps to mitigate the muscle protein breakdown which is inevitably happening as we're breaking it down. Um, so there is a little bit of research into it. Check it out. Let me know what you think about it. And let me know if you like these nuggets of, of research put in throughout the videos and I'll do that. Um, I'm not going to show you the full session. I'm just going to show you a little bit and then show you a physique update and where I'm sat uh, literally four weeks out today, which is cool because I do a physique update once a week. I'm feeling pretty fucking shredded. I'm going to be honest. My legs have really come in. I've got veins all over my legs, which I never thought I'd have. I'm very, very like fucking dry up here um, so things are working nicely and we've just made a big change to see the next four weeks bring something crazy can't wait let's get into the workout guys um, I will put the full workout up on screen right now everything is as normal just getting some isolations done first um, it's mostly a shoulders and arm session with a little bit of chest put in there just to kind of bring up some chest volume uh, let's get into it <laughs> So I know I said I wasn't going to talk through the workout too much, but I'm going to just because I've got the opportunity with Will here. This is my favorite, or one of my favorite delt exercises. If we look at the function of the delt, or one of the functions of the delt, and the function that we're trying to work in right here, we're trying to look at um, essentially abduction, which is bringing the, the, the humerus upwards. What, what doesn't make a difference is actually where the, where the load is placed on the arm. So if you're placing the load on the wrist and you're moving up, there's no difference than, than actually placing the weight here other than on internal joint pressure. So we're not trying to create pressure in the joint, we're trying to create load on the muscle. So actually by moving these cuffs up to my elbow, I can reduce the joint pressure, but still get the same range of motion and the same shortness in the muscle and lengthen in the muscle throughout the whole movement. So this is my favorite exercise my delt. That's all I'm gonna say on these exercises, so you can just watch the rest.
Sound cool a bit. I said I'd never show this again. Here's a mug cake. So prep hack and bodybuilding hack, first prep hack, on the milk, obviously 13 calories per 100 mil, nothing. Second hack, don't drink your protein shakes, make them into a mug cake because when you make them like this, they're like a little bit of cake and they taste just as nice. This is my biggest carb meal of the day. Now the reason why this is my biggest carb meal of the day is because it's because of a glucose transporter called GULT4 or glucose transporter 4. Transporter four. Now this upregulates during uh, during training, during exercise, which means we have more capacity to transport glucose. So it makes sense for us to put more of our carbohydrates post workout because we have that ability to uptake more of it. So it's only nine grams of cocoa pops, granted, but it's like a seventy gram carb meal. All the rest of them are like forty or fifty. Um, so post workout meal is going to be 45 protein from whey. It's going to be 70 carb. It's it's pretty much zero fat. You know maybe one in the protein. Um, so this is focused on a carb heavy meal for recovery. Um, and I'm going to get on some work, some chill tonight. It's Sunday. I'm going to chill for a little bit, and then I'll see you at my next meal. Oh boy. I know you know what's coming next. About that part of prep. Chicken, egg, it's torture. Starch. Currently trying to hit. 11 and a half thousand steps a day. That's just gone up and a thousand and a half as of today. So normally I'm done by now, 9,900, but I've got to go out and get an extra 1,500. A little walk around the block, back in for the next meal. So that is an 11 kg bucket of bath salts. Amazon is like 20 pounds. This is also a very good bath salts because it's infused with vitamin C, which we know neutralizes chlorine, which would be in the water. So it makes it much more plausible for us to get it. Tips. So we're on to meal four, five. It depends if you count the intra. So depending which meal you want to call this, we have 170 grams of chicken, again, trying to hit that 40 grams of protein that we talked about um, to you know, spike that muscle protein synthesis. I then have uh, onions, garlic, which you need to be careful of the allium in it. It may cause uh, GI irritation, gastrointestinal, gastrointestinal irritation. So be careful if you get farts, if you get gas after you eat onions and stuff, you may just have uh, irritation to allium. So I only use half an onion and hopefully that sorts me out. Um, and then a bit of garlic. I also have some yellow tomatoes in here with some wild mushrooms. I then also have salsa and some jalapenos. And then I also have a little bit of um, beetroot salad. I also have 250 grams of sweet potato, which I mix in at the end and make it like one big salty goodness with salt, which I have. Celtic sea salt, which has an amazing mineral complex on it. Check it out, Google it. Um, it's very, very good, almost better than pink Himalayan sea salt, I would say, um, which is a cool one. Another thing I haven't talked about today is gonna to be hydration. I always drink about five to six liters a day, naturally, because I'm just thirsty. Also sweat a lot. Um, I use zero calorie squash all the time, so don't worry about it. I drink a lot of water, but I drink a lot of a zero calorie squash as well. Um, with all of these vegetables, I don't track them at all because I have the exact same things. So, like pretty much every day, I'll either have onions, tomatoes, you know, garlic, and, and a mixture of, of salad or something, or I'm going to have you know something else, and, and I'm always swapping between the exact same things. For example, if I always have this, no matter where my calories change in terms of the whole things, it doesn't make a difference because it's always the same. It's much like the squash or like the one calorie sprays, like it's one calorie spray, but you spray it 10 times, right, that's 10 calories. But if you always spray it 10 times and everything else changes, you know that that's constant. So it doesn't matter that it's not accurate, it just matters that it's consistent, if that makes sense. Let's eat. Turns out to be quite a big meal, to be honest. I will note like these little things like salsa and, and hang on. These little things like salsa and, and jalapenos and jalapeno jalapenos and 
you know, these little, very, very low calorie, like in the jalapenos, there's like eight calories, you know, and it's going to add so much flavor to my palate. It's these little things that, yeah, if you count, you should still count them in, but they make such little difference in terms of calories, but such big benefit in terms of mental, you know, taste for the food and making it taste nice, looking forward to it. And, and just being in that positive mental attitude when you're looking forward to a meal rather than thinking, oh, it's not going to satisfy me, you know, rice, broccoli, chicken, great. So think about it, make your meals taste nice. So final meal of the day is going to be another protein mug cake with 20 grams of 90% dark chocolate. In this one, I've used the Lean Way Cookie Crisp. It comes with like actual cookie pieces in it. It's fucking amazing. It's so good. This is on Insight. Josh Temp discount plug. Inevitably, because I'm on a deficit, I'm in a calorie deficit. My food, my my micro and macro nutrition is it is structured and it is, it is like, you know, it's, it's controlled and I, I can't go excess. So it's not necessarily the healthiest diet. I try and get different essential fatty acids. I try and get different pro, pro, um, highly bioavailable proteins. I try and get different carbohydrates from different sources. I have lots of different vegetables, but inevitably it's not loads of food. So I'm probably not hitting my micronutrition and micronutrition, but that is just part of bodybuilding. It's not necessarily a healthy thing to do. It's just part of it. Um, and that's something that we have to consider when we're doing this kind of thing. So hope you guys enjoyed this full day of eating. Um, I briefly said this on my Instagram. I'm just going to say it here. Like if anyone out there is, is really serious about their goals and they want to work with me one-to-one -one on, on an online coaching basis, I have lots and lots of clients. I've had lots and lots of clients. I don't really advertise on YouTube because it kind of speaks for itself on Instagram. Um, you can follow me on, on, on this Instagram page here, which is my coaching page. It's, you know, it's got thousands of posts already. Um, that I've been working with over the years. So if you're interested, drop me an email, be in the, in the description box and, and on screen right now. Otherwise, guys, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you very soon. Peace out.